Hello everyone, my name is Hong Weibao. I'm an associate professor in media studies at the University of Nottingham. Today I'm going to talk about how can we see each other, fan purpose, diasporic filmmaking, and transnational queer Asian cultural politics. So I'm going to conduct a case study of fan purpose fiction filmmaking and his queer activism in the past few years. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the British Postgraduate Network for Chinese Studies for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, the title of this conference is called Negotiating the New Normality. There are lots of questions to be asked. What is new normality? What norms are we dealing with? What's new about them? And of course, I come from a queer theory background. So normality is, in a way, a big term in queer theory. People are talking about different senses, different aspects of normality. For example, heteronormativity, which is heterosexualized norms, and then homonormativity, which is what gay and lesbian people learn from heterosexual couples about their social norms and practices and replicate these heterosexual norms. And homonationalism, so which is kind of nationalist norms being incorporated by queer communities. So these are some different normalities that people are dealing with. In East Asian context, we need to be particularly careful in using those terms. For example, uh, Yao Qing uh, in her book has mentioned that in East Asian context, gays and lesbians seem to be wanted to be as normal as possible. So contrary to their Western counterparts who want to be radical, different, and abnormal, so to speak. So this as normal as possible, the desire for normality marks the kind of what well, being outside the norm, but meanwhile longing to be part of the mainstream. Elizabeth Ingapritzen also mentioned that uh, normality in the Chinese context should be seen as a context specific and constantly shifting context. So we are dealing with different normalities in different contexts. It's important to look at this context very carefully. And Ying Chao Kao in a recent article even argued that homonormativity is a kind of colonization of Western queer theory. So we really need to be careful in using these terms in East Asian contexts. So lessons we learned from queer theory are norms are not static. They are contingent, they can be negotiated, challenged, they can also become hegemonic and simply challenging norms is not enough. We need to imagine new ways of living. And uh, when it comes to queer people, we always have to ask what norms can queer people challenge? What would a queer world look like without normalities or if we don't follow normalities? In answering those questions, I'm going to use Fan Purpose films and his activism as case studies. For those who are not familiar with Fan Purpose's work, he's one of the most famous uh, filmmakers, a curator, activist, and writer from mainland China. So he graduated from Beijing Film Academy and made many documentary films uh, famous for his Rainbow Family trilogy. And once in 2013, he challenged the uh, China Censor, which is the state administration of film, uh, radio and television, and his films got banned after that. So well, as a filmmaker and activist, he didn't have many places to go or to, or at least he does, doesn't have a future in China. So he went to Berlin and started his filmmaking and art career there. So in Berlin, he 
of course, immediately embraced the Quay scene there. And Berlin is very is a very artist city with many artists and filmmakers who still pursue their dreams. So it's a perfect place to be. However, perhaps the world is not that perfect. In Berlin, he finds himself being a minority, not being Chinese, but being Asian. And being Asian is seen as an uh, ethnic and racial minority in a, in a Eurocentric society and white dominated society. And uh, in particular, since the start of the pandemic, being Chinese and being Asian has carried a specific stigmatized uh, association. So there were many instances of xenophobia and uh, anti-Asian racism. Fan Popo himself were subject to such racist abuses. So according to him, uh, being Asian in Germany is like being queer in China. So one is a sexual minority, the other is a racial minority. They both exist in society, but they are marginalized and they are allowed to exist, but they don't have many rights. So this quote, interestingly, compares different types of identities. They also point to the intersections between these different identities, such as ethnic identity and sexual identity. What would their intersections look like? How would that impact on people's everyday lives and experiences? So Fan Po Po has assumed a queer Asian diaspora identity, and this identity becomes a ground for him to articulate his own cultural politics. So my presentation will be focusing on his queer Asian diaspora politics through his films and his curating. So of course, I'm focusing on his fiction films made since his uh, relocation to Berlin. So the first film I'm going to talk about is uh, called, so uh, Floss, which is a 2019 film. So in this film, it's, this film is, this is a short film that primarily takes place indoors. We don't know where it is, but we can imagine it's a flat in a Chinese city such as Beijing and Shanghai. And two people, two gay men were living together. And life, their life is probably not bad because from their dress, from their decor in their flat, and from the food they eat and so on, they're probably quite well, comfortable uh, uh, in life. So in other words, this is kind of middle-class gay couples family. It looks like even without the social stigma and discrimination, they probably don't need anything else. I mean, it's equivalent to same-sex marriage. However, even if same-sex marriage is legalized in China, gay people can live together like them, there are still problems. So this is what this film tackles. So let's play a film clip. Okay, so that's a trailer for Van Popo's film, Loss. So what's interesting about this, you know, with, about this film was that it raises questions about sexual stigma, even if being gay is not a stigma anymore. What about other desires? One person in, 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 in this family happened to have a fetish for the other person's teeth, but a fetish is such, a kind of 
sure a shamed thing to admit. Even among gay couples, they wouldn't be feel comfortable to talk about each other's fetish, fetish for feet, for clothes, for uh, BDSM, and so on. So in other words, there are hierarchies of sexuality, hierarchies of desire. Some are more legitimate than others. So we really need to think about what we have excluded when we talk about gay rights, same-sex marriage, and so on. So this is really a kind of queer reworking of the gay identity politics or queer critique of the gay identity politics. Okay, so that's one of his earlier fiction films, first fiction films. And the second film I'm going to talk about is called The Drum Tower. So The Drum Tower is located in central Beijing, where Fan used to live when he was in Beijing. So this is also a kind of short film of 20 minutes. A high school student saw a trans woman. That trans woman works for a, a clothes boutique, fashion boutique. And uh, the boy, in a way, grow a kind of fascination towards that trans woman, but he didn't understand why. And the trans woman uh, start, uh, in a way, you know, was facing the destiny of being evicted because of uh, uh, Beijing's, uh, in a way, gentrification movement. So the two people shared a lot of fate in common, and they started to understand and develop a friendship with each other. So that's the narrative of the drum tower. So the drum tower talks about this messiness of identities and desires. Is this person gay or straight, cisgender or transgender? So that's on the personal level. And then on the structural level, there is this kind of Beijing's campaign to be civilized, to, in a way, to gentrify itself. And a lot of people, such as migrant workers, uh, prostitutes, uh, transgender people, and so on, they were driven out of the city. So under the facade of the normality, in a way, many well, ambivalences were erased. So the drum tower. Okay, so the next film was made after Fan Popo moved to Berlin. So the film is called Beer Beer. So it's basically an encounter, an inter-ethnic and intercultural encounter between a gay Asian and gay Caucasian, between a German guy and a Chinese guy. So they met outside of a club in Berlin one night and they decided to walk to this Chinese guy's flat. They stopped over and had some snack. They picked up a, a discarded uh, a mattress and they talked about each other's lives. And there's a lot of things going on and they seem to grow a liking towards each other. Here's a trailer for Beer Beer. Sorry, what did you say? That guy, such an asshole. Hmm? 
Okay, so Sorry. if the what above description actually、uh, strikes you as a romance film, there's this is nothing but this is not a romance film. It's more of an anti-romance. I won't give out a lot of plot, but I would、uh, like to say that、uh, this film really parodies the kind of racism, implicit and explicit forms of racism and Eurocentrism in Western society. And Fan uses this critique. He、uh, uses this film to critique the kind of. You know, Eurocentrism in queer communities, even among、uh, queer,、uh, you know, Asians and Caucasians who are attracted to each other, to each other, they are still negotiating with this kind of universal terms such as such as such as truth, objectivity, and authenticity, and so on. Okay. So the next film that I'm talking about was made during the pandemic. So during the pandemic lockdown, I'm poor, poor,、uh, made a short film in well, you know, being invited by a TV station RBB、uh, to talk about anti-Asian racism that he has experienced. He uses a format of cooking to talk about racism. So this film is called. Learning Deutsch in my kitchen, so learn German in my kitchen. So we need to go to the television station's website in order to access this video. So the video is in German, but、uh, the plot hopefully is pretty straightforward to understand. Hallo Chef, mein Name ist Toto Fan. Oh, auf Chinesisch bedeutet Steiger. Bitte, bitte. Okay, so it looks like I I have to do it in small screen. Wir zusammen ein paar Worte in meiner Küche lernen. Oh fuck. Dear Eis, me. Ich habe ein Eisbrei zu Frühstück. Die Karotte, Kohlrabe. Es gibt vier Vitamine für die Karotte. Die Fledermaus, Bienfu. Nein, ich habe nie. Okay, so we stop the film here. The most bleed mouse could guess it. The noodle, mie. This Jajangmyeon noodle is typisch. Okay, so let's. Stop the video here and then stop share. So I'm going to go back to the slides. Okay, so this film is interesting because by using cooking,、uh, Fan is talking about some cultural stereotypes associated with Chinese, in particular during the pandemic, such as the bat. But he also uses humor to ridicule those cultural prejudices and stereotypes, and so this is, in a way, counter racism and the cultural, in a way, ethnocentrism in a Western society. So from that event, Fan Po Po realized that simply not simply by challenging the norms is not enough. 
And a more important thing is to build a new world, build a world. And of course, as a filmmaker, as an activist, so film become an important way for him to imagine a new world, to build a world. So he curated some film programs. One of them is called, How Can We See Each Other? So this question really comes from the fact that in many film festivals, for example, Asian queer films and African queer films are, in a way, separated according to geography. So Asian people do not have a lot of opportunities to see African queer films or Latin American queer films, where in, in fact, they may have more in common with, for example, European queer films or American queer films. So it is time for marginalized communities and non-Western cultures to look at each other, to work with each other uh, for a kind of decolonial strategy. So what Fan Po Po did was he put what well, these films from different cultures together according to their shared themes, not according to you know, ethnographic or, or geographical boundaries. So the hope is to find a community together through watching the films, showing the films, and in a way, consuming or uh, watching the films together. So really it's about community building through shared understanding. And last year, Fan Po Po together with other people organized another event called Imagining Queer Bandung, that is a podcasting and filmmaking workshop. So in that workshop, queer people of color work together to produce films and to build their community. So uh, the, you know, a blurb of the event says, how can we imagine alternative approaches in which queer bodies across Asian, African, and Caribbean contexts participate in, produce, and reclaim these larger discourses for themselves, their communities, and their liberation as neither national nor sexual subjects. So real objects, so really it's about uh, gaining one's subjectivity and reimagining uh, queer people in particular, queer people of color as active subjects instead of, instead of passive objects of colonialism and sexual racism. So in some of we have explored some of Van Popo's anti-normative strategies and his queer diaspora politics. Uh, he celebrates what's unknown, contradictory, and ambivalent, and refusing a narrative closure. And there's also a disidentification with identity categories such as gender, sexual, uh, and national, uh, and so on, uh, identities. There's a problematization of universalism as well as a celebration of every day. More importantly, there is a kind of there is the bold boldness to reimagine a world, reimagine another world that challenges or that is outside of the colonial borders. So as uh, Cui Ziren famously said, the ruin is already a new outcome. For Fan Po Po, this ruin to challenge these norms is not enough. And there should be a necessity, a need, to imagine uh, be, and build a new world. So eventually, that's how we deal with normality. So for more information about Fan Pupu's films and Chinese queer films and activism, these are some of the further readings. Thank you very much for your attention.